Are you kidding me? The guy asked for something spooky. Is it a gun that sucks balls? I'm the farting demon in this relationship. <laughs> I'd be an awesome rich person. You're both just an exactly. embarrassment. God, I'm awesome. We're talking Tom Hanks and his vehicle. Yeah, I had my finger in my mouth waiting for you to finish. You gotta get four balls or something? Like dick piercing? <laughs> no, you know damn well I'm fucking that demon. It's still sexy. How could that be close and not be right? Yeah, I'll just kill some random dude. His wishes. Hey, ridiculous. everyone, and welcome to Plotty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail. The necessary and appropriate backlash. On one side of the table, we have Chump Slap. When I'm on stage at the airport, Radisson, ex- accepting my local Peabody, I'm not going to mention any of you. And on the other side of the table is Dr. Scientist. Because there's only one rule in my bedroom fuck all rules. <laughs> my name is Papa Scotch, and as I always say, how about a gross of fluorescent condoms for the novelty machine in the men's room? I mean, <laughs> those are fun even when you're alone. We're talking the hula hoop of the 90s. <laughs> Welcome to Plotty Time. So we'll start. We always start. Dr. Scientist, what have you been playing, watching, doing? What's going on with you? Not a whole hell of a lot. Still watching uh, RPG Limit Break. I'll be watching that for a couple more months. I'm in the middle of an eight-hour one now. <laughs> so there, this is a YouTube channel. It's Games Done Quick YouTube channel. but okay. I think. Maybe it's RPG Limit Break's YouTube channel. But yeah, because I mean, I obviously know what RPG Limit Break is, but for yeah, those yeah. those people out there, you know the the Zoomers, they maybe they don't. Uh... Yeah, it's a uh, speed running RPGs. Ooh, is there like one game that's like the long one? I, like, is there one that like can't be beat under like fifteen hours or something crazy like oh, that? I think there's a couple, but I don't know if there's any on this one. Right now, I'm in the middle of Final Fantasy twelve, and I think that one's eight hours. Oh, sick! Eight hours, wow. Uh, I finally broke down and watched Weird. About time. Oh yeah, what'd you think? It's pretty good. I like it a lot. A lot, a lot of no, things I didn't know actually happened. <laughs> did I mention I watched it? I think I did. I, uh, I sure. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, I, did. I watched it too at some point. Hey, yeah, you always forget that he wrote "Eat It" before "Beat It" was out. <laughs> Everybody forgets about that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so amazing. Good. It's really something. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> and that long relationship you had with Madonna. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was that long in the film. <laughs> it wasn't. It was like a couple of days. <laughs> it's just she wanted that that Weird Al bump or whatever they yeah, called the it. Yeah, the Weird Al bump. They, they became famous when they... Ah, it's such a good movie. Very it was good. a lot of fun. I liked it. I, I think my absolute favorite part of the entire thing, though, is when he's talking to his parents. And he's like... And his mom's like, you know what? I'm fat. And she's like, I'm fat. I'm fat. You know what? I'm fat. And they're all like, yeah. You know, mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even bring up the. Yeah, it doesn't even take the song at all. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love what he's talking to his parents on the phone, and his mom's like, "Your dad wanted to tell me he absolutely is not proud of you." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. I love when his dad gets mad and beats up the guy selling the accordion too for no reason. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Is that? Didn't I read that that's how it actually started? Like an accordion salesman came around. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about his real story. Yeah, neither do I. I think there was like three nuggets of truth in there, and then the rest was yeah. absolutely true. Well, Doctor Demento was the whole. That was all true. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Kind of like this game. I saw the movie Bullet Train. Bullet Train. With, is that uh, the new one? Brad was, Pitt. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually not that bad. Really? Okay. I enjoyed it. I was entertained. I didn't hear anything positive or negative about it. So I know. Yeah, I just didn't hear anything. I, I just saw it came out. I didn't. I heard nothing about it either. And I was like, oh, it's on Netflix now. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. dude. I was just looking through Netflix. And th- like, you know, you hit the button to start it. You walk away or, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I hit that. And then I just see Brad Pitt in a train. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm like, bullet train. Oh, yeah. That's a movie coming out. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's pretty good. He, well, he plays like a assassin type guy and he gets on a train and there's other assassins on the train. Oh, that sounds fun. And the whole, the whole story breaks out and stuff and goes through. But yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. I I recommend everybody, if you need something to just be entertained by nonsense, do that. Word. What did I play? I started this game called Last Stop. Last Stop. Okay. Yeah. What's that one about? It's, uh, it's about a bullet train. <laughs> it's about a train, actually. <laughs> no, it's like... Interesting. Uh, it's kind of like three... It's the story of three people. I'm assuming it ties in all at once at the end or something. But like weird supernatural stuff is happening. Like mm-hmm. one one guy switches bodies with another guy, like Freaky Fridays him. Okay. Okay. And the other one, well, the other one's not like. And then there's a story of this woman who works at like a super spy agency for uh, somebody, either the UK or something like that. Right. Right. And the third one is this kid 
her and her friends come across this guy who's like a green angel. They see, they catch him like in that, and they they catch him in time to a chair and talk to him. <laughs> and it kind of like goes through parts of each of their times. It's it is interesting. It's kind of what's happening to each one. And All right. Uh, but you don't know where it's going. Not yet. All right. Because it doesn't seem like they're tied together at all, except for the little freakiness. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. It's not that bad. I, I'm enjoying it so far. Okay. Okay. Is, what kind? Is this isometric? No. <laughs> Top down shooter? No. It's kind of just like a graphic novel. Like a walking sim? No, like a, like a, <laughs> like a novel. Damn it. One gotcha. of these days. But uh, what about you, Papa Scotch? What do you play, watch, do? What's going on with you? I watched a bunch of stuff. Well, I'll start with what I played. I played uh, a lot of Tiny Tina. Oh, yeah? Still doing it? I, I think I'm done. I, well, I think... Well, yeah, I'm probably done. My thought process is I'd have it on the downstairs PS5, and every once in a while, maybe play a couple matches or whatever. Jesus a couple Christ. chaos runs. <laughs> right, right. But, like, I'm still... The last trophy I have to get, I've gotten all the DLC trophies, all the main game, except for maxing out all the slots. And I think I've got two slots that are on level 9 of 13 and one that's on level 10 of, like, 23. So I have, like, what is that, 21 more upgrades to get? And each one, I think, roughly comes to, like, 4 million. This is all very exciting, I'm sure. (laughs) But I think each one's going to come to roughly, like, 4 or 5 million, and I can't even make that in, like, a four-hour session of the game. Oh, screw that, man. So it's like, it would just be a massive grind for one gold trophy. Yeah. And, uh, no, it'd be a massive grind for a platinum trophy. Ooh. That's true. That's true. You're right. <laughs> but but when I can download the jumping hot dog turbo and have a platinum in 30 seconds, it's <laughs> takes away some of the mystique. You should stop getting <laughs> these cowardly ones oh, and get God, some real platinums. I like the quiet man. Yeah. Yeah. on another game right now. I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> I think next week. Next week, I think I'll get to it. Ooh, I can't but, wait to uh, hear about it. Yeah. Yeah, I've just been playing that. I, I mean, it's fun. Like, I'm having fun doing it. It's just, like, I'm at the end game point where my build is pretty darn strong. I can grind and get, like, chaos chamber rounds, but, like, why? Like, to get slightly better gear? I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So, whatever. Uh, then, uh, that's all I played, but I watched a bunch of stuff. I finally finished Better Call Saul. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't have much to say about it. It's good. It's, if you like the Breaking Bad stuff, it's good. It's real good. If you don't care about that universe at all, then it's it's not for you. I mean. What if you just never heard of it, Breaking Bad? Never seen it? Never cared? Is it just a good standalone? It's a good standalone, but there's so many nods to Breaking Bad and so many characters that uh, you're going to be you're gonna be missing a lot. It'd be almost impossible for Papa Scotch to rate it without have, having seen. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. Someone had to have watched it without it, you know. I mean, I can maybe s- not. <laughs> I'll try the first episode if you really want. There you go. There you go. It works well as a standalone story, and it's definitely its own thing. Like it's its own. Yeah. It barely deals with it. Like White Walter White and Jesse don't even show up till like the last episode of the last season. Oh yeah, Cause yeah, because that's probably where it starts, right? Yeah, it like it takes place a little bit in the past. Mostly the chunk of Saul is like the four years before Breaking Bad starts where he's turning into a good lawyer. Right. Or right. basically like a scumbag lawyer, yeah, I should yeah. say. But it's good. It's If you like Breaking Bad, you'll like this. And then there's also uh, watch the new Interview with the Vampire series. Oh, yeah? How'd that turn out? I think I talked about it before, but it's it's good. I like it. It's definitely different. Yeah. Uh, it's, def- it's like completely different than the Tom Cruise movie, like completely. But- you have the same characters, like some of the ages and backstories are different, but it's a pretty neat take if you like vampires. All right. And then I watched Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh, yeah. You finally got to that? I finally did. I didn't finish it, but I watched a bunch of them. The one that really sticks out is, uh, you've seen it, Dr. Science. Yes, I have. The one with the uh, the awkward girl at work with the lotion. <laughs> like That was uh, Kate Micucci. Yeah, that was the, one of the last ones I saw, but I'm like, this is fucking weird. That was weird. It wasn't that bad, though. I kind of liked it, but... It wasn't that bad, no. I'm I'm glad it wasn't any longer. Like, if it was a feature length, I would have been... Who plays her husband? Uh, Martin Starr. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I couldn't think of his name. I was like, is that... Because he didn't have the beard. I yeah. was like, is that... What? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that was him. He was great. Uh, and then I w- I'm probably going to finish that up. I don't know. I got to get to it again. But I also <laughs> watched a horror movie I want to talk about. Oh, yeah? Have you guys heard of the movie Advent Calendar? I've seen it, and I thought about watching it. Maybe closer to Christmas. 
It's a uh, it's a foreign film. I I apologize. I forget what country it's from, but it's about a woman who is disabled. She doesn't have the use of her legs, and her friend buys her this creepy looking advent calendar she bought in Germany. And then each day comes with a piece of like candy, and when she eats it, like a new curse or something happens to her that she has to deal with. It's like why would, you, why would you stop after the first day? Because <laughs> yeah. she can't. Like if she stops, then she'll be killed. Oh, that's a shitty calendar. Yeah, to buy what a fucking it's not, gift. Yeah, it's it's a horror movie, guys. Like it's not. Yeah, a, but what a gift to give to yeah. someone who already lost their legs. Jesus. I I don't want to spoil it or, or do any of that, but supposedly if she does that, she gets a wish, and her wish uh, would be to walk again. I suppose. Oh, uh, she walks right into traffic. Yeah, she walks right into something like that. <laughs> some kind of parable bullshit. But uh, right. I'd, I'd say check it out. It's creepy. It's pretty good. All right, cool. And then since it was Christmas horror movie season, we watched Krampus again. Nice. It's always a good one. Because it's just great. Right on. But uh, that's it for me. How about you there, Sir Chomp Slap? What are you playing, watching, doing over there? Well, I finished Horizon. Oh! Wow. wow. Finish, finish, or finish the story? Finish the story. Probably wow. finished playing it, too. <laughs> I I don't know. By the end, I was just, okay. I just wanted to finish the story because there was another game I wanted to play. Sure. I mean, I might go back and do some shit in the future, but... You won't. I say that about every game. I say I that, too, do. and I never do. No. You're like, oh, I can save it right here. I'll back up my save file just in case I delete it. I still have Returnal on my PlayStation, and I'm like... One of these days. <laughs> One of these days. I've been looking at Maze for months. <laughs> Just sitting there installed. Right. Like, oh, I think I'll do it next. And I forget it's there. Yeah. But yeah, great game, man. Real fun. Good time. I loved it. I thought the last mission was pretty, I don't know, uneventful. Pretty easy. I was expecting a crazy battle. but You're probably overleveled. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I think the mission was like 30-something. I'm like 40. I didn't even get to level 50, the cap. But it was pretty close. But yeah, okay. good game. Yeah, I loved it. So, I want to play the next one that's out in VR. Yeah. Did you pre-order the VR already? Yeah, pre-ordered the I VR. Thought, I thought so. I think I talked about yeah, it. Yeah, well, like, I think you may have. Yeah. I just, know. you know, I, I'm just mentioning it again. No big deal. Yeah. Cool guy to, to put. <laughs> I, I don't know. Honestly, I think my other PSVR, I think I put in. I mean, I'm, I'm, oh, I think I'm overestimating that I put in 60 hours in that thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I can justify the price for how much I probably won't use it. But whatever. Yeah, I get it. Uh, whatever. I gotta, <laughs> my, I gotta force myself to do it. Yeah. Well, you gotta do it for the podcast. It's a write-off at that point, right? Good point, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> With all that profit we're pulling in. <laughs> Might bump me into another tax bracket. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be careful. That's why you gotta write it off. <laughs> Keep you below that. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've been playing. Uh, I watched The Other Guys again. Oh, it's such a good movie. <laughs> it's so good. Did I talk about that last time I watched it, like a couple weeks ago? I think so. I think yeah, something, recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. something struck me, and I was like, uh, oh, I got to watch it again. So Yeah, good. it's pretty good. I haven't seen it in a while, but every time I see the beginning where, Chris, where uh, The Rock and <laughs> Samuel Jackson just jump off the building, <laughs> I'm like, what were they trying to do? I, like, he's like, land in the bushes. Yeah, he's like, just tuck when you hit the bushes. <laughs> and they just went, they weren't even close. They didn't. There's 20 stories. (laughs) (laughs) It's hubris, right? That's so good. Then I watched uh, another rock movie called Black Adam. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, what do you think? I don't... I didn't like it. It was... I don't know where... I guess it was a DC comic book. Mm Mm-hmm. But it's just, he lives in the DC world. So there's okay. this kid asking, like, are you faster than the Flash? Can you do like this, like Superman? That checks out. I was like, okay, whatever. And then there's like a magic word. If he says Shazam, he loses his powers. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is... Uh, I don't talk know. about Shazam or are you talking about Black Adam? I'm talking Adam? about Black Adam with The Rock. <laughs> it just came out not too long ago. The only one of those DC movies that I would say I genuinely liked, like front to back, I think might be Shazam. I think that's the only one really? I really enjoyed. I think of the DC ones. Uh, well, I mean, I, other than the new, like other than Batman, let's let's leave Batman because okay, right. those are all good. But. I kind of like the new, the new Suicide Squad, the newer one, newest one. Oh, and Wonder Woman two was pretty good. Yeah. Wonder Woman also. Wonder Woman two was not good. <laughs> yeah, Wonder Woman two was not very good at all. That was a damn shame, dude. I was expecting a lot from that movie. Yeah, and then I watched it and I did that denial thing, like. 
Well, that was that was good, right? Like that was good. It was good. They they really they nailed it, I guess. You it, think for a while you're like, did we need two villains in the? No, okay. Uh, and then you know, yeah, come to reality. But I don't know. Black Adam's okay if you're into superhero movies, and I'm not really, so I don't know why I tried it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's The Rock. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's The Rock. I'll give him the fucking benefit of the doubt. Sometimes you just want to watch like a big Hollywood blockbuster spectacle movie. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, I don't know, maybe this will be good. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, Let's, I get it. We I did that to the to the wife last week. She's like, what do you want to watch? I'm like, and then we do our thing. I don't know. What do you watch? I don't know. And then I'm like, let's just watch a big fucking Hollywood blockbuster. Yeah, there you go. And then we got distracted and didn't do it. Yeah, exactly. That's mostly what happens to me. But but then I watched uh, this documentary on Netflix called Pepsi. Where's my jet? Oh, the story of that guy <laughs> who got the that. jet. He never got the jet. No, dude. but <laughs> he should have. I never knew how it ended, so I was like, I'll watch it. I mean, it was okay. Didn't but, he like settle out of court or something like that? Yeah. No. Oh, didn't he? No. The oh, they paid him. Judge or... threw him out. Threw it out the case. That's bullshit, man. Oh, it totally is. If you watch it, they're definitely on his side. The guys who made the documentary. So they're like, isn't this some bullshit? This corporate judge, Pepsi picked it. Blah blah blah. You know how it is. Yeah. I, I mean, like. For fucking Pepsi, can't they just be like, all right, you got us. This has been fun. Here's $10,000. Please go away. Well, in the documentary, they're like, they, the guy says he they offered him a million dollars, and he said, no, I want the fucking jet. So I mean, I could see. I mean, a jet's like, what? <laughs> $34 million, they said. $34 million? Yeah. Jesus. So I could see him being like, no, I want the jet, and like thinking, I don't know, even if I get 10%, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, more right. than a million. And then, oh man, I would have taken that fucking million and just ran. Yeah, it, it was it was an interesting story. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that sort of. And yeah, it's, it's is a, it a mini series or is it just a movie? Uh, it's four episodes that are like forty okay. mi- forty minutes each. So, gotcha. It's not terrible. That's why I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll give it a go. But okay. yeah, it was pretty decent. It's the second best thing other than the other guys that I watched this week. So <laughs> sure. So that's all for me then. All right. Well, uh, with that, then, let's go ahead and move into the Plotty Time Vibe Check. All right. Let's check the vibes. No. So I read an article that uh, is, this has to do with NFTs, Dr. Scientist's fav- favorite thing ever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Money making. <laughs> the GTA online servers have banned the sales of crypto and NFTs. <gasps> now, I don't know much about Grand Theft Auto Online. I haven't been there since, like, the online launched. Yeah. But uh, apparently there are servers where you can just role play. And there's like, I read an article too where there's like a bunch of people like role playing as cops in the GTA <laughs> universe, just, <laughs> like just beat cops driving around. I don't know. But apparently in this section, their role playing servers, it created like a marketplace where people sell like music and uh, like bootleg copies of stuff and loot boxes. Oh, great. That's that's probably good. Yeah. So they, they banned anything dealing with NFTs or crypto from those storefronts but not bootleg movies and shit yeah yeah i guess not i guess not so i just thought that was interesting that even online spaces that would be should be filled filled with these nfts if they're so awesome that you know they're awesome in the way everyone's been talking about oh but yeah. they're like no give it time none of this give it time, give it time. <laughs> so how many nfts do you own now dr scientist eight or seven 12? around seven or eight thousand damn he's no fucking Spring chicken to this NFT yeah. thing, man. They're worth about fifty or sixty bucks combined. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always say when people are like, "What do you mean you can't pay for lunch?" I'm like, "Look, all my I'm not liquid. All my money's in NFTs." <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see how far that gets you. Also, I read about a new rumor <gasps> that Sony is going to clamp down on those sweet platinum games. Oh, I read that too. Store shovelware, as they call it. Instantly mm. thought of you, Scotchy. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was like, what's he going to do now? How are they going to... What's the criteria they're going to use? Well, this is all rumored at this point. <laughs> if so Papa I... Scotchy bought it. <laughs> yeah, it's off. <laughs> it's off there. But uh, it had something to do with, like, if it isn't different enough, it's like it's like uh, the wording is spam and copy-paste type uh, software. Okay. Because, I mean, they're all the same game. There's a background and a little fucking dog or hot dog or whatever in the front, and it just bounces up and down, and that's the whole game. So your uh, graphic novel ones, your video novel, where you can just hold down the R1 and it goes through, would still be... Yeah, those would still be there. Oh, they'll still be there, but they take, like, 
20 minutes to platinum, and who has that time? Dude, that's so, gross. <laughs> uh, so nothing's official, but I think uh, the big part of this is people keep complaining that when they go to like the new release schedule, it's just filled with these bullshit shovelware games. Yeah, it is kind of annoying. But <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Some of us, it's... I mean, I don't oh, yeah. look at the new release section, so I never see this. Uh, but apparently, that, well, not apparently, but someone pitched the idea of, if you want to fix this right now, just take away the platinum from all these games. Like, just don't have a platinum trophy, and no one will buy them. Yeah, that's true. Which, they might be right. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely stop being on the new releases. I doubt you'd buy any. He actually loves the jumping hot dog. <laughs> I'm playing it right now. <laughs> the story gets me every time. <laughs> it's very sad. I was gonna, I was gonna get a T-shirt about the Slovak run, but now you guys turned me off to it. <laughs> the what? The Slovak run? Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, dude, it's just a game where you control the dude, and uh, the background is just you know moving against you and getting faster and faster with every jump you do. Right. It's kind of on. That's par it. With, that's it. That's, that's the whole not, game. There's not like obstacles or nothing. There's obstacles, you gotta like jump over chasms and stuff, but the trophies are all just like run for a mile, run for two miles, run for eight miles. Like that's all the trophies. Oh. Uh, so you just keep playing it. And even if you die, you can't. Yeah. No, you just don't you just go. It's it's a joke too. <laughs> but I know Dr. Scientist will be sad to see those games go. <laughs> Won't we all? And then in other news, so it's been news, it's this has been happening for a long time that Microsoft uh, is trying to buy Activision, mm. thusly getting full control of Call of Duty. So when a big acquisition like this happens, there's regulations, there's all kinds of stuff that need to be looked at from a legal standpoint to make sure it's not a monopoly. So it's this acquisition is having problems getting through. Okay. It's, pro it's ultimately going to get through. It o they always get through. Yeah, yeah, I don't see why not. So Activision and Microsoft are trying to basically tell Sony, like, hey... Don't sue us. Let us go through with this, and we'll make sure you always have Call of Duty. Hmm. Well, that's, that's the rumor that's being pitched, that they're saying to PlayStation, like, we'll give you 10 years, or we'll give you unlimited forever Call of Duty. Like, we won't make Call of Duty exclusive to our system, because why would they? That's a stupid yeah. business idea. I don't know. Yeah, it's just a way for them to make more money. You think it's Sony that's suing? Yeah, I mean, they would. They, I, they absolutely would. Like, yeah. that's just a business tactic that they use. Well, and any merger like this is there are lawsuits, yeah, and they're true. usually like looked at and then like thrown out. Just it's a delay tactic. That's is Activision is. a United uh, U, a U.S. company? Probably. I think they have an office in Canada. I think, but mostly a U.S. company. Yes, they're based out of California. I thought. I don't know. I'm asking. I have no frig. Activision idea. Blizzard. Blizzard's from Texas. So all right, all right. and Microsoft's U.S., but Sony's a Japanese company. I think they're, yeah, they're all, everything involved in the Microsoft is American companies, but yeah, they might I'm have like sure no other country would let them do it besides the U.S. No, of course not. Mm. So that's fun. Cool. See where that goes. I'm sure it'll just get approved and everyone will have Call of Duty and that'll be the end of it. Yeah, mm. exactly. Even people who don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and then in quick news, did you guys hear there's a Starship Troopers game coming out? No. Uh, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's called Starship Troopers Extermination. It oh, is a 12-player PVE shooter. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Done. I th so I think it's one of those, uh, what do we call them? Multiplayer Mul games? Multilateral multiplayer, whatever it is. Yeah, like a Destiny. Terrible. Like your Destiny, like your Evil Dead. Like Don't your buy it. Back for Blood, like all of that. Is there a single-player campaign to anyone? Is there any info on that? What are the odds it has anything to do with the story of the movie? Like fascism bad? Like, the fashion, the guns, I, that's probably it, right? No, no, no. Yeah, the, creatures. The, the actual point of the first movie. The first movie? What about the third? <laughs> that didn't have anything to do with the first movie. <laughs> exactly. <either. laughs> I think I've seen the... Well, definitely the first, obviously, because it's a masterpiece of American filmmaking. Mm -hmm. But right. I think I've seen the second one once and never the third. Yeah, I don't think I've seen the third. I may have seen the fifth one. There's five? I don't know. No, you just <laughs> they all have Casper Van Dien. That's all I know. I don't know. I saw eight through twelve. On a plane. <laughs> In one sitting. Yeah, it was a long ride. <laughs> uh, it's supposedly cooperative. 12 players can team up in squads of four to defend your base, complete objectives, gather resources, and try to kill every bug in sight. 12 players in teams of four. 
You can construct walls, towers, ammo stations, and more using resources. So it's just resources. zombies with insects. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like one of the multilateral ones, but... Sounds like horde invasion too. Yeah, like mixed with a horde mode, maybe or huh. large scale battles. I don't know. I'm. I mean, I hope it's good, but if it's just the multilateral thing, yeah, I ain't gonna play it probably. Not if you need friends. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. It's a big problem for the older gaming crowd, right? And then the last piece of news. I know you guys are really gonna care about this, but the EA Sports college football game is not gonna happen until 2024. So I know Dr. Scientist was psyched about 2023 release, but sorry. It's yeah, not happen. I guess I'm not going to play my 2023 Richmond team. <laughs> the Spiders? Yeah. Man. Always next next year. That's a real fun town, Richmond. Yeah. Which one? At Virginia. Oh. Is Richmond that where that what? Richmond College is? Yes. <laughs> 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 or University, I guess. I don't know which one it is. Uni. I always, well, okay, yes. The University of Richmond is in Richmond. <laughs> And Virginia Commonwealth oh, that is in settles Richmond. everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I get. I always get it confused with uh, Virginia, which is in Charlottesville. None of it matters. I'm not going to call. I'm not looking yeah, at these the, colleges to go. How could you confuse Richmond with, with Charlottesville? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. No, not the town. Just the co- the college Virginia. The Cavaliers oh, is not based out of like, Richmond. They're based out of UVA. Yes, UVA. Yes. yes. That's uh, that's why I get it confused. This is the banter are... people come for. <laughs> well, this is a, I'm vibing on this. <laughs> well, chime in, fans, if you want to have us talk about local Virginia universities. <laughs> Fuck. All right, fine. Let's move on then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the game. How about it? Let's do it. Well, all right, what game are we doing? NMH. As you can see by the episode description, no more heroes. Mm-hmm. It was released December 6th, 2007. Oh, that's so long ago. Now, before I get into the number one song, Ooh. the polls are clear. <laughs> <laughs> the, you have the no fans choice. <laughs> have spoken. It's a landslide, as we call it. Uh, so I have to now sing this song as Bentley. <laughs> and that's, uh, I did that to myself. Yeah, you started I accept, this. <laughs> I set that responsibility, and I say, you know, fuck it, let's just do it. I'm, I'll, I'll commit to doing it in 2023. Right. December sixth, <laughs> 2007. Uh, number one song in the country. <clears throat> no one, no one, no one can get in the way of what I'm feeling. No one. No one. Oh my god, I know what song this is. Uh, no one. The song is No One. Do you know who sings it? Because that's hard to sing. Bruno Mars. You're not that far off. I well, can't think of who I exactly Wrong gender sings. and singer, but. <laughs> no, I, I was just saying a random singer. I can't think of who sings, like, Harry Jupiter. This singer was extremely popular at the time, and I really haven't seen her much lately. Miley Cyrus. Sierra. When I say it, you guys are going to feel like idiots. You ready? Mariah Carey. Alicia Whitney. Keys. Oh. Oh, isn't she dead? No. no, she's running a record company. You're thinking of a shunt, not a yeah, shunt. Yeah, the one that was in a plane crash. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you read my mind. Yeah, she was dead years before that. Aisha? Years before that. Aisha, it might be, I don't remember. No, I think it was 10 or 94. It doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> Number one movie in the country, the tagline. If you guys get this, you guys are fucking nerds. But here we go. <laughs> All right. Tagline. It's the Altheometer. It tells the truth. Uh, The invention of lying. No. A good guess, you have a guess, so. Dr. Scientist? I have no idea what you just the said. The Alfea meter? I wouldn't have got it either. The Alf A L E T H I O M E T E R. Alfeometer? Alfeometer? Alfeometer. Sure. <laughs> uh, synopsis Lyra Bellacroix lives in a parallel world in which human souls take the form of lifelong animal companions called daemons. Dark forces are at work in the girl's world, and many children have been kidnapped by beings known as gobblers. Lyra vows to save her best friend Roger after he disappears. You made this entire thing up. I was going to say Pan's Labyrinth. I really wish I did, but this is an actual movie. Uh, she sits out with her daemon, a tribe of seafarers, a witch, an ice bear, and a Texas airman on an epic quest to rescue Roger and save the world. The Oof. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Dr. Scientist is a lot closer than he thinks he is, but... Narnia. It's not Narnia. No, it's the Golden Compass. Oh, Yes. Of I remember hearing it about is. it. Is Daniel Craig in that? You sure. Know what? Who cares? I didn't see it. Yeah. It's an alethiometer. Alethiometer? Mm. I don't know. Just... Alethiometer. 
Allie, you know what? This day in history, December 6th, 1876, the first, and this is one that's close to all three of our hearts, as we all three at one point lived in an apartment attached to a crematorium. (laughs) December 6th, that's a whole other, there better be an FAQ follow-up for that one, but here we go. December 6th, 1876, the first crematorium in the U.S. begins operations in Washington, Pennsylvania. Oh, well, look at that. Hey, just for the record. Chump Slap lived in two apartments attached to crematorium. <laughs> he How's sure first? did, didn't he? <laughs> he was the first. That's right. I forgot about that. You made the big move. You went upstairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we still have the open thread for you guys to ask us questions. I expect there'll be one or two about that. But go ahead. Oh, yeah. I guess I should mention that. Go to Reddit. There's a, there's a thread there. Uh, you can also go to socials. Ask us questions there. We want to do a QA and a episode one day, so send us your questions. <laughs> it's slow going, but we'll get there. <laughs> it's slow going. We have a decent stable. We might be able to bullshit for an hour, but I want to be sure we're going to bullshit for an yeah, hour. So yeah. send those questions. <laughs> and now you have one about crematoriums. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone's got to send it. I'm looking at you, Blaine, JJ. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> so this game released for, sorry, No More Heroes, released for the Wii. A Wii exclusive, hmm. developed by Grasshopper Manufacturer and published by Ubisoft. It is a single-player action-adventure hack-and-slash game. And this week, Dr. Scientist, you picked it, did you not? Uh, yeah, I did. It's also a Suda game. Yeah, it's Suda 50. It might Suda 51. It's either our second or third one. I don't remember. We did. I thought about this. We did uh, Shadow something. Yeah. Yeah. And that other Shadows one. of the Damned. Yep. We did Lollipop Chainsaw. Oh, we did three, maybe? Killer 7. Yeah, yeah. That's the other one. I think that's it. I completely forgot about Killer Seven. Yeah, that's the those are. Whatever. It's a lot similar to this game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was gonna save this for the end, but I feel like every time I we do a Suda game, I'm like, man, that blue. And then I go look it up, and there's like a billion videos of why it's a hidden masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, everyone it's, just yeah. I, I, and it, I'm just like, I'm I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll get into it after Doctor Scientist yeah. shepherds us through the story of this game. Well. You start as uh, you play the character Travis Touchdown. <laughs> great name. <though>. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to give him that. That was a great. No name. notes. No <laughs> notes at all. Nailed it. And he's this uh, just nerdy anime loving weird dude. Mm-hmm. That's basically it. And yeah, he he wins a laser sword in an online auction. Sure. Yeah. And then he gets drunk and. He's out of money, and someone pays him. He goes to a bar, and someone pays him to assassinate a guy called the Drifter. Right. Yeah, that's what usually happens when I get drunk. If I had a nickel. <laughs> the number of times I got propositioned at a bar to go kill somebody. Ed, we'll be here all day. Seriously. <laughs> Ask us questions. So he goes, and he fights the Drifter, and then he finds out that he's the 11th ranked assassin for the Universal Assassin Association? Something like that. UAA. Yeah. UAA. Yeah, and he fi- he uh he's like is Sylvie there. Sylvie calls and like, well now you're gotta fight all the way up the ranks because if you don't, people are just gonna keep trying to fight you. So you gotta fight to be number one. Aim to be the best. Oh, that makes sense. That and makes total sense. Sylvie's the kind. Sylvie is the woman that paid him to do this, and she kind of is your mentor along the way, trying to fight these assassins. Mm-hmm. It's I thought it was an interesting idea, but I don't think Travis Touchdown really understood the weight of this when he started getting into it no because she's like oh now you got to go fight until you either die or become number one or they're going to come after you forever good and luck he, and he's definitely super creepy to her oh man yeah well, yeah this he's is... like if i make it to number one can we do it <laughs> <sighs> so i felt embarrassed for him it's got to be like a like a cultural thing that we're missing like this cheeky quote-unquote sexy humor yeah I mean, I it's don't a suda thing <laughs> he does do is it, it a suda thing or is yeah. it like a, a, a japanese thing i don't know i don't know I don't want to be that broad about it, so I'm going to say it's a Suda thing. Okay, I'll take De- it. It's definitely in his games, we'll say that. <laughs> yeah, sure. It is without a doubt in this game, yes. So you're kind of like stuck now, and they do this thing every time you wake up. There's a, what are they called? Answering machine message? Yeah. Yeah. I completely yeah. forgot what they were called. And uh, it's always some woman asking for the porn back at the store, and then... Always. All at before every fucking fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was getting a little old after three, four nights. Uh, it was kind of old after the first time. <laughs> no, the first time, I'm like, oh, okay, porn joke, sure, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then they did it eleven more times. Like, god damn it. And then 
the uh, association contacts you with, uh, hey, this is where your next fight's going to be. Come here. This happens every time after you beat somebody. So this is going to happen at least 10 more times. <laughs> now, before we get into it too far, I don't know if you guys looked at this at all. I looked at it a little bit, but... Before every assassination he at Travis Touchdown has to go on, they require a fee. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to get that fee, you do like the most menial, stupid jobs in the town square. Oh, really? Like one of them's to go pick up chickens. Yeah. Like that are just, just out and running around. You just go pick them up and deliver them back. So you do stupid shit to get money to kill people. Yeah. It's yeah. They're happen. extremely tedious, dumb things, even in the video game form. Wow. It's a meta commentary. You don't get it. Oh, I get Bri- it. Brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. So good. <laughs> so, after uh, you go into your number 10, who's called the Holy Sword. Holy Sword. And <laughs> it's just a shirtless guy with tattoos, basically, and a giant sword. Yeah, he's got a nice beachfront property. Yeah. Yeah. You sure go, you, you fight him, you cut his arms off, and then his head off, and then you're like, hey, now you're 10th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I even wrote... He says, "Have sex? Can we have sex if I get to number one?" I just put "fuck out of here." <laughs> yeah, but she's like, "Yeah, sure, whatever, let's go." So you kill him, then you go through the same bullshit of haha porn joke. Uh, yeah, I just I just have my notes. Uh, and if he becomes number one, he wants Sylvia to fuck him. Mm. And I just wrote my note, gross. <laughs> <laughs> just right after, gross. Uh, so the next day, well, I don't know if it's the next day. Sometime, the next one is Doctor Peace, who is a dirty detective. Kind of like runs black market stuff. Yeah. But uh, whatever. Like, I'm having a hard time picturing which guy this was. Which guy ba- was this? Baseball stadium. Yeah, the first guy at the baseball stadium. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Okay. He, the, he was singing when you came in or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he, he has a revolver. You go to Destroy Stadium, which is an awesome name for a stadium. I'll give him that too. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And it looks a lot <laughs> like the old Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Oh. I, I Easter egg, I guess. Not that that matters. I mean, it for could, anything. Like, I don't know. It could look like a Japanese stadium. I'm pretty sure there were a lot of Easter eggs in this game. Yeah, and uh, he's singing show tunes when you come in, and he's like, "Oh, the association booked everything. They paid for this stadium. I can sing whatever I want." And he's like, "Oh, that's where all my money went." Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, I paid for this." So fucking weird. I paid for that. No. Yeah. So you fight him. Bang! You're number nine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's. Don't what? you like hit a bullet like a baseball? Right? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so so dumb. It's it, 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 all these crazy things happen. Yeah. You're forgetting you have a lightsaber sword. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're right. So of course you wake up the next day, you get the thing, and you have to go to the school to fight your next opponent, the number eighth ranked assassin, whose name is Shinobu. <gasps> oh no. Okay. And it uh, it's just a school girl with a katana, basically. Mm-hmm. She's mad. Also, we're not mentioning it, but like. Leading up to each fight, like when you're about to walk in the room, you Sylvia always calls to talk to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's always, I guess defeatist is the best word I can say, yeah. but she's like, oh, man, like there's no fucking way you're going to beat this guy. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I will be shocked if you survive. Win. Yeah. yeah, like that kind of talk every single time until you get to like three or something like that. And she's like, I think you might do this. Yeah, yeah. So it was just, it was weird. It was a weird pacing thing. But again, that could be just, you know, the movie I watched. Yeah. Well, it happens. And you you meet her and she's like, you have this long conversation about the honor of assassins and whatever. And she's like, you killed my father. And he's like, no, he was my mentor. I never killed him. He says, I never met him. I just watched his videos. Yeah. Like he's like a YouTube guy or something, maybe. Yeah. Well, this guy's a loser. You're supposed to get that. <laughs> yeah. So you end up fighting her, and you don't kill her, and you let her live. You do cut her arm off, her hand off. And you're like, all right, now I'm number eight. You go. And he's like, I just want to fight someone strong who's going to give me an actual fight. A lot like Goku, if you do anything with Dragon Ball Z. He's always like, oh, I want to just want to fight someone tougher than me. But I always, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought the rules were you had to kill them. Apparently not. I thought so, too. Yeah, they say that later. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he lets Shinobu live, right? She yes. Gets yeah, yeah. She's a child, basically. Yeah, pretty much. I do appreciate the amount of gore this game has, though. Oh, yeah, the blood <laughs> like just should... everywhere. Yeah, just pouring out like a fucking... Well, it's a lot like Killer7 was. Right. Yeah, good good call. Which we also covered that, so go listen to that episode. Yeah, yeah. And, and Lollipop Chainsaw, which had a ridiculous amount of blood. It's a banger, both of them. And Shadows of the Dead. We liked all of, well, I think Killer7 we were lukewarm on, but 
We liked Lollipop and Shadows of the Dam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what we rated him. We'll talk about it later. Next day, you wake up. Of course, another porno joke. <laughs> please return. Super- How to please a woman in bed. 101 part two. Did you actually write it down? I wrote that one because they've used that joke twice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> it was annoying. Was like, they use it really? the first time and they're like, if that wasn't embarrassing enough, now you got to return part two. Yeah. He ha- he plays it fast and loose with these movie return rules. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a rule. That's and a- are they trying to shame him to learn how to please a woman here? I thought it was just the person at the movie rental place just pranking him every day. It made more sense that way. <laughs> it does make a lot more sense that way. Yeah. It doesn't make any, a lot of sense either way. No. Anyway, so your next opponent is Destroy Man. Good name. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'll give Suda one. He does come up with good names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does. Can't argue with that. No notes. And you're supposed to go to a filming studio. And when you get there, it, it's just a buffed mailman, like a super jacked mailman. Like if The Rock played a mailman. Right. But like looked like a total geek. Yeah, <laughs> like they tried to look him as big of a nerd as possible, and then they dressed up the rock yeah, like as the, a mailman. the short mailman shorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But he has like the satchel over his shoulder. Yeah, and he's like, "I need some time to prepare." Can you turn around? And then he turns around, and <laughs> he's just in a superhero suit, like just, I guess destroy man suit. Yeah, well, he does try yeah. to shoot a fires a laser at yeah him. yeah well like, move out oh of the he way. sure does he sure does <laughs> and then he's like all right let's shake for a an honor duel and it's a giant joy buzzer thing that's like dude it's an exact almost word for word for space balls yeah because he's like i can't believe you fell for it oh, <laughs> you're so stupid. it might even be the uh easter egg you call it yeah 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 but yeah you've never used that one you don't know that that term dr side yeah he knows what an easter egg is no, yeah. just the way you said it is. I thought you, I thought you meant like an Easter egg, as you would call no, it. No, no, someone, someone, one of you two said earlier about there's a lot of Easter yeah, eggs. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I did. This is the one I was talking. <laughs> and <about>. then, <laughs> at one point in this fight, he gets nipple guns like Austin Powers. I wonder if that movie holds up. <laughs> Good question. It's a great question. <laughs> and uh, you slice him in half. Oh. And now you're number seven. Yeah. Was he the one that put up like the biggest fight? I guess Shinobi. Who did? They she all kind of put up fights. For a while. I mean, it's not easy for him. No, there's barely anyone he really just kind of mows through. Yeah, yeah. He gets his ass kicked a lot, but he seems to like get up. Yeah, a yeah. lot like Goku, hmm. just like Goku. Mm-hmm. Another Easter egg. So now you're got a challenge number six. Who you find out is Holly Summers, which you basically go to a beach and it's just a woman with an, a robotic leg, artificial leg. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you're a coward. You won't kill a woman. And he's right. Yeah. That's a great thing to say to an assassin. Yeah. And then he's like, you eventually fight her and you won't kill her. And then she just puts a grenade in her own mouth and kills herself. Right. But he felt something for her. There. Yeah. I loved your soul, he says. What the fuck was this? What was this? <laughs> like, so again, to summarize, and... Guys, correct me if I'm wrong here. All right, we will, we will. So there was the fight, Mm -hmm. and TTD was about to basically put the finisher in, and then he's like, nope. And she goes, you know what? I knew you were a coward. I knew you wouldn't do it. I have my honor. I'm going to shove a grenade down my mouth, and my head's going to explode. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's what's almost word for word. That's confusing to me. Well, she lost the fight, and yeah, she's she's an honorable assassin. Okay, let me refrain. Was was that a... Was this a joke? Like, not in the game. Like, to us. Was this supposed to be... like a joke, like funny. Uh, I don't think, or just just absurd. I think it's just absurd. Yeah, I was so. I, was so, I, I definitely so didn't many, laugh if it was supposed to be funny. I could do an episode on this fight. I'm so confused <laughs> by what happened. But in the interest of time, we'll just blow past it. <laughs> and uh, we also forgot to mention in the other ones after you beat the guy or the woman, the woman, uh, Sylvia shows up with a cleaning cleaning crew and they come and clear the body. This time you help bury her, and you're like, I loved your soul, and you throw her in the thing. Yeah, really got to know her in that yeah. couple minutes. TTD here is uh, just craving the touch of a woman, I think. Really? Yeah. He's... Because he's such a nerd, guys. Uh-huh. Dudes who play video games can't get chicks. The uh-huh. doy. The doy. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next fight, the number six guy, is one of my favorites because it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Sylvia's in Ibiza, and she's like, oh, I'm partying, and your next fight is, let's Shay. You're like, all right, where do I got to go? So you end up on this road with a bunch of windmills, and there's this huge robot with a 
I guess it's an organic brain on its top. I mean, it's like it looked like a normal brain, a giant skyscraper. Not skyscraper, but it's pretty big. It's almost like a rocket. Yeah, yeah, like a rocket, but it had like properties of a totem pole. Is kind of what came to yeah, mind. Yeah, and there's a big like punk rock guy with a huge mohawk on it. Mm. I'm not sure which one was Let's Shay. Is what I'm saying. I think it was the robot. I want. I think the mohawk guy was the hand. I could be wrong. It's confusing, but the the thing I was gonna say is that the brain on top of it in the bowl is a lot like when Homer Simpson in the Halloween episode <laughs> got it got his brain put in the robot. That's what we're looking at. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. Just you know, for the listener, and it starts charging up this huge attack, and then out of nowhere, a guy falls from the sky and cuts the whole thing in half. Boom! And it's you see, it's also a guy with a beam katana, and he's like, "Hey, I'm Henry." Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, you become number five now. Yeah. Because uh, Let's Shay died, and it was your battle. And Henry's like, let's uh, just uh, have a little battle here. So you fight Henry a little bit. And then he just disappears. Mm-hmm. That's kind of it. Yeah. You fought your way up to five so far. <laughs> the next day, she's like, oh, Sylvia calls you. It's like, I have tickets to the show. And he's like, it's a date? Oh, no. There's <laughs> another part where I put fuck out of here in my notes. And it's uh, your next one, number four, Harvey Moiselovich Voldovsky. I can't even. I, that's not even close to what his name was. Volodorsky. Sure. Yeah. What a. Moisey. No, no. He's basically <laughs> a, a magician assassin. <laughs> <laughs> Makes total sense. Magicians <laughs> traditionally perform in front of people and need to be the center of attention and leading the room and prominent, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why would that? Why would an assassin? be such a public facing ro- I don't know I, I just oh, it's pretty great yeah it is it's pretty great <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great <laughs> so eventually you fight him and kill him doing all these magic tricks and stuff and now you're number four <laughs> he, he calls you up on stage you're yeah. like, oh my god <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he really kicked me he does a saw in half illusion <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, uh, the whole scene was great Yeah. so next time you're up you're against number three which is a witch who lives in Speed City called Speed Buster. Damn. So you go, you get on a bus, and there's a whole bunch of fights here. And uh, then you get off, and there's this witch fighting your master, who I guess is just the guy you watch the videos of. Yeah, do, do they say that anywhere? Because he's just like, master. Yeah, it's kind of just, oh, maybe it's it. important I didn't, that wasn't in the movie. I don't maybe, know for sure. yeah. But anyway, he loses to the witch, who's just an old lady with a shopping cart. Right. And uh, just, okay. <laughs> and eventually, uh, you fight her, and her shopping cart turns into this huge gun. Yeah, th- she keeps saying, "Can you repeat? Can you repeat that?" And then just keeps building. Yeah, it just keeps getting bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger. bigger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Eventually, you fight her, destroy her gun, shut, cut her head off. Who's the first woman you actually? I was gonna kill. say you have no problem m- murdering her. Well, the, I. I I think I know what his problem is. You think? One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you? Do you? And now you're number three. All right. So next time you wake up, you're trying to figure out who number two is. And a pigeon flies through the window, and it's a note from Sylvia, who's like, don't look for me, but go to Destroy Stadium for the next number two. Which is... <laughs> you're like, oh, back to the stadium, I guess. Yeah. Which I don't know if it's supposed to lead up to the end or if it's just another way to do this that he was doing. I don't know. But anyway... The next one is Bad Girl, who who might be one of the better ones, the best ones in here, because she's just like a Harley Quinn type assassin. Yeah, a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Doctor Scientist, explain to the listeners the intro to this character, because that needs some explaining. Mm-hmm. Well, she's in front of like a conveyor belt, mm-hmm. and yeah. she's holding a baseball bat, and there's just guys with masks on and ga- ball gags in their mouth. Coming down this thing, and she's just hitting him in the head with the baseball bat as they come in. <laughs> Makes sense. Like just conveyor belt murder. Yeah, they yeah. all have leather pants on. It was no yeah. shirt. It was very, <laughs> very confusing. And they all did not look like they knew where they were. Yeah, but she's just like, oh, time to murder. Ping. Hey, she loves killing, and killing's her job. She does. And she's an alcoholic. Doesn't she get tired of it though? Isn't that like her thing where she's like, this fucking sucks? Yeah. yeah. Or like she's bored with all the murder. And you fight her and then you stab her through the chest and she just keeps beating you. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, as she's beating you, she di- she's like, you give up and you're like, I lost. And then she dies. So then you actually win. Oh. And you're number two. Fantastic. Now you're waiting for number one to find out who that is. 
and you're like, I don't know why I've never did this before. And you star 69, the UAA number, mm-hmm. which I hope, well, all our people who listen to us are old enough to know what that is. Before our caller ID was on everything. Right. Mm-hmm. He calls it back and a lady answers and she's like, oh, you've been had. I'm Sylvia's mom. There's no such thing as the UAA. She does this all the time. Which let me, let me guess, she charged you for each flight. Yeah. What a fucking pivot in this story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty wild. I gotta say, with all my heart, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> and she's like, Yeah, Sylvia's a con artist. We're like, like 80% through this story. And they're like, Oh yeah, by the way. This is all made up. The whole frame of this is bullshit. Yeah, she's convinced all of you the UAA is real and it's not. Did she convince all the other assassins? I'm assuming so. Huh. Well, okay. This is a fun moment to talk about a new term I learned. <laughs> right. Gaslighting? I don't know. I, I didn't like this at all. So I, I went online to be like, why do people think this is good? And I learned the term <laughs> ludonarrative dissonance. Oh, okay. Have you guys heard this term before? We've talked about it. We just no. didn't know the name of the term. I'm, I'm sure we have, just didn't know it was called that. So I have, I yeah, exactly. I have the definition. It's the conflict between a video game's narrative told through the story of the game and the narrative told through the gameplay. <laughs> so it's like the best example is Drake's Uncharted. Like the story is about this rogue, handsome guy who you end up loving and caring about. But in the game, he is a fucking murder machine. <laughs> okay. Like it doesn't exactly match. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, because you need to pl- you need to have the game to play it to have the story. Yeah, so that's what Ludo narrative dissonance is, and it's a lot in this game where. The gameplay, especially with the, like the picking up chickens and doing the bullshit boring stuff in the middle, doesn't make sense yeah. in an assassin thriller. Right, right. <laughs> so that's a fun new term I learned. And right. we'll, I'll forget it by tomorrow. It's yeah. no bio recombinate, I know, but <laughs> I will never forget that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll, add, we'll add to the lexicon. So after you find out this is all a big con, you're like, I might as well do number one and figure out who that is. I think her mom says that. She's yeah. Like, how like, far did you get? Yeah. Oh, you might as well do the might last well one. Finish it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wrap it up. Just wrap it up. You're almost there. And uh, the number one assassin is Dark Star. Oh, snap. Sounds like a badass. Yeah, he yeah. does. I, you have to chase somebody on a bike, and I just put a whole bunch of cryptic shit happens here. I don't know why I wrote down so many notes yeah. about the porno phone calls. I, don't, I, just, <laughs> I didn't need to do this. Yeah, they have nothing to do with the story. No. At this point in my notes, I just wrote apartment and porn. <laughs> <laughs> and then he called the this is oh that's where he called uh her mother yeah but he gets to the castle and doesn't sylvia say something like she loves you now but like she can't be with you yeah she calls and she basically makes fun of you too i put basically calls you a limp dick pansy yep no one will love you like you're an <laughs> idiot for thinking i'd actually like sleep with you yeah you fucking moron yep and then he goes to the desert castle that's when i have my notes yeah in the middle of a desert and you fight a it's like a matador and he has he has a similar weapon to you. It's a long whip, like it's like a beam. And he's like, "Hey, I'm your true father." <gasps> well, here comes a flashback. Yeah, like this. Okay. And you remember that someone killed your mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't remember exactly what happens here. Oh, this is the, this is where uh, he's like, "You need to look hard at your memories." And yeah. He's like, "I don't remember anything about." No, you need to look hard. And he's like, "Oh shit, I do remember." <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's not how memories work. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just need a coach. Yeah, you just need someone to go. No, like, dude, remember. Then you'll remember everything. Apparently, yeah, apparently. yeah. And uh, you remember that you loved somebody, and uh, mm. then Dark Star's like, "Oh," and then he gets stabbed. Right, and then. It, Behind him is the woman who killed your parents. Oh, my <gasps> God. Who is that? It's Jean. Jean? Who, this is the first time you actually meet her in the game? Yeah. As far as I know, yeah, she just shows yeah. up now. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, I can't tell you how everything is. It'll take too long. And he's like, well, why don't we just fast forward? And then it kind of fast forward through the explanation. And I must have rewound it about 15 times to hear what they I were saying. I listened three times, and I was like, I'm not finishing this. And she goes through this explanation that you're her half brother, mm-hmm. and your dad left her. Her and her mother, yeah. Yeah, and uh, she used she was sexually abused by people, I guess foster homes or whatever. Maybe even your dad. I'm not sure. And that Sylvia arranged all of this for revenge and uh, forcing you to do all this and become a killer. Right. <laughs> it's like it's like vengeance begets vengeance. Blah blah blah. She says all this in a fast forwarded like thirty second thing, and it's all like. Blah, 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 blah. I slowed it down and listened to it's it. It's a bit. Yeah. It's a bit. 
And she goes through that whole story, basically. She's doing this to get vengeance on the entire family or whatever. So then you and Jean fight. Mm. Right. And she punches through your chest at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's violent and whatever. And uh, she's beating you. And then out of nowhere, she punches you through the chest. And then Shinobu mm. shows up and slices off her arm. Oh, snap. And then you slice Jean the rest of the way up. Yep. Like, da, da, da. Get, and she's like, Ugh. and then you and Shinobu are like, all right, thank you. You let me live. I saved you. We're even. And it kind ah. of. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait till the end. No, go, go ahead. And that's basically work. the end. You're kind of, it shows you like after that, you're the number one assassin. Mm-hmm. Dark Star's dead. And Jean, and who with Sylvia's help, got all this revenge against you. But then she lost and died. Whatever. So you're in your apartment and whatever. And some guy breaks in. While you're on the shitter. Yeah. Of course. Which is, I, I don't know, whatever. It's hilarious, guys. It's just pretty good. I didn't Let me, laugh. if you don't get, if you don't think that's funny, you don't get it. Like, you just don't get this game. Yeah. Well, then I don't get it. <laughs> he, uh, he says some stuff and then the guy gets basically slaughtered by Henry. Oh, there's you may, Henry. You remember, may remember from the Let's Shea fight in the middle of the street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you don't remember? I'm your twin. And they're like, what? And he's like, Sylvia's my wife. It's so and he's like, what? And he's like, every once in a while she disappears and she comes back with a whole bunch of money. She lives this, like, <laughs> le- she's used to the finer things, yeah. if I can use the term. So eventually, Henry, I guess, doesn't make enough. What does he do? Doesn't he have, like, a regular job? Yeah. yeah it doesn't matter. He says what it is, but I don't, I don't remember. He exactly. says what it is. I don't remember. But he's like, yeah, and she has expensive taste. So every once in a while she just... uh Goes out and comes back with a shitload of money. And I don't ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and we love each other. And they start. He's like, "Well, don't you want to know all this stuff?" And they start having. They start having this battle of like going back and forth and talking. Like, man, do you think the fans are going to get all this stuff and want to know all this? And he's like, "I don't know. We're going to have to end this soon." And they kind of like jump at each other, and it just ends. It's like, how are you going to end this? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, they kind of like jump, and it freezes. And then, it very goes, meta, very yeah, meta. And then, and then it goes through the credits, and at the end of the credits, it shows a painting of TTD and Henry's fight, and uh, it shows a little girl standing there, and and her mother comes along. Yeah, her mother comes along, and the mom is Jean. No, the mom's Sylvia. Mom is Sylvia, and the kid is Jean. Yeah, she's like, let's go, Jean. Which means Sylvia. Was married to your dad. It doesn't mean, or anything. not had married to your dad, but <laughs> had a child with your dad. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because who, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it, it's just, but I guess to confuse everybody. Yeah, it was like, oh well, how are we gonna end this? I don't know, like this. Uh. Yeah, because Sylvia is your sister. Oh no, Jean is your sister, and Sylvia is your, I guess, stepmother of some sort. But it's always well, also with your twin brother. But it, I don't know. It, it didn't make any sense. It's just, yeah. I, I don't even know if that's. Whatever. We'll find out when we do No More Heroes 2 exactly oh, what happens. Oh, thank God. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> well, that's it. That's the game. We did it, I guess. I guess. So uh, let's go ahead and move into final thoughts. Oh, and, my uh, God. Who would, who, you know what? I might as well give it a shot. Dude, I got you have a lot. a lot to say. You sound like you got a lot to say here. <laughs> there were several times where I said, uh, yeah. Uh, but I just don't. What am I supposed to say? I need some direction here, guys. Oh, uh, did watching this video make you want to rock a light katana? <laughs> okay. Was the story pretty good, or did was there more that you wanna get from it? <clears throat> and perfect. How many stars out of twenty-seven will you fauna? <laughs> This. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Nailed uh, what, it. What, what rhymes with katana? Uh, you're the one that started it. Nothing. Literally nothing. Nothing rhymes with virgin. Go Sturgeon. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so all right, this game is fucking silly. Like, there's, <laughs> it's silly. It's meant to be silly. I, I think I'm starting to kind of possibly maybe understand Suda's whole bag. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I, I think he's a guy that has a very unique artistic style who is, I, I, this is my theory, I'm basing this off nothing, but I think he is being held at gunpoint to make video games. I think he hates, he hates video games. 
<laughs> or maybe, maybe, okay, maybe he doesn't hate video games. He likes video games, but he hates the fact that he has to make a story that goes with the nonsense of the video game. Yeah. Okay. Because all of his stories, I think, I think the one that was the most straightforward was maybe Shadows of the Damned. Yeah. Well, I guess Lollipop too. Lollipop was pretty. On, yeah. Not on rails, but this game is very confusing. I want to say some positives for it too, but I watched some videos, <laughs> looked at the game, and there's something else going on here. Like it's deeper than just complete total nonsense, but I'm not smart enough to make these connections. <laughs> um, I, I think like the Suda fans get it, and like you don't get it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't. I, d- I just see a wildly silly story. I can get on board with a story about assassins killing assassins. That's not the problem. Yeah. But when it turns like the the last half of the last act, <laughs> like you just like, like oh yeah, that? this this whole story, this whole thing you're doing, the whole United Assassin, like is complete bullshit. Because why wouldn't it be? Why if you had a stable of assassins, why would you have them killing each other? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It doesn't. Why would make you any want sense. fewer assassins? That's a very dangerous job. Like. You want as many of them as you can. Yeah. No, you're killing them all just to quote unquote be the best. So, I mean, it's silly, but at the same time, I understand how they're trying to like tell a story of how the desire for power changes people because Travis Touchdown starts fucking thrilled to do this. And by the time the woman blows her face off with a grenade, he's like, I don't fucking care anymore. Like, this <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm numb to this. <laughs> he's like, I don't care. Like, there's several times where he wants to back out and he's just sick of it. And then there's a bunch, there's like a side theory of like, it's about the sins of the past that'll come back to haunt you, which is what the last half, the, it's nonsense. Like, I, <laughs> I see there's something deeper here. I'm not smart enough to get it. So my score should reflect that. <laughs> I like that. I mean, the score always does. That's it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't question. But I'm I don't think it's bottom of the barrel that we've been running into a lot lately. I don't think it is. Like I think there's something smarter going on here. I just am not gonna understand. So I'm gonna give it a seven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, if it was anyone else who made this game, I'd probably give it like a one. <laughs> yeah, because right. I because there I mean this is our fourth one. Like we have an idea of what this guy is doing. For the medium, and I know there's something better going on here, but whatever. I'm not. I don't get it. I don't get it, and I have, <laughs> I have to make peace with the fact I'm not going to get it. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So then let's go ahead and ask Sir Chumpslap what he thinks about this game. Oh yeah. So uh, did watching this video make you want to be an assassin? No. Did the story work for you, or would you rather... Fuck, I have nothing. Put some gas in. Put oh, some gas in. Thank nice. you. Thanks for the save. Uh, <laughs> what score out of 27 stars do you think you'd give this Masson project? <laughs> well, I didn't think you'd kill it like that. Well, you could have said in passing. <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta step it up. All right. Did I want to play it? Uh, No. It was pretty much make money to fight. I don't, I don't, I don't see a point in playing it. <laughs> and the story, I don't. Unlike you, Scotch, <laughs> I think I get it. Okay, I would love nothing more than someone to explain it to me. There's <laughs> nothing deeper than fucking face value here. Oh, that can't be true. If that's true, that's so sad. It's got to be true, man. It's just, it's silly, wackadoo, weird shit. I think it's also like uh, like comedy and horror are extremely like culture centric. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like horror movies in America are different than horror movies in Japan. Like there's a true, different true. history things that scare people. So comedy is also like that. So I think with the translation, that doesn't help me. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This guy's so eager to get laid that he's paying to fight other assassins. People should be trying to kill him all the time. And these higher up assassins. Why is it number three fight, trying to fight number two already? You know what I mean? Why is there even ten of them? Doesn't make any sense. It's a great question. How do you get to like number three? And st- How do you even get to number three? Yeah. And then just stop. You're not going to kill two. Yeah, you two. just stop? It's all you made up. You don't fight two in one? Well, I know it's all made up. But it doesn't make sense. And this guy is so blinded by his one chance to get pussy. He does this. Maybe. It's like they establish rules for the game and the universe that we're in, and then are like, you know what? This is kind of not convenient for us anymore. So fuck this. Yeah, and they exactly. Just make up other shit. Exactly. And that, and then the fucking 
insane twists after twist after twist at the end. I don't, I don't, I think that was just a joke. I think it was supposed to be funny. I agree with you. I think it was supposed to be funny. And I I think there's some humor to it. I just, I can't make sense of why it's funny because it's so out of left field. Yeah, but well, it's because like it's during like, the fight, it, they're it, like, why? Why? How are we going to end this? How is this? You every week talk about movies wanting to be them to be just ridiculous and have pointless endings. And then you're complaining about this one. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm saying. I'm complaining. Yeah. I am, I am yeah. complaining. Scotch is the one who's complaining. I fucking, I love this whole absurd, random bullshit, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to make sense. And that's why I like it. I, I think that's the Suda 51. <laughs> I, I think, Stop I think you're to right. figure it out, Papa Scotch. I, I think you get it and I don't. That it's just like, yeah, it's a story. You're having fun playing, aren't you? Yeah. It's what like does it the movie Wrong sense? Cops. Go watch that. And if you get that, then you'll understand Suda 51. It's what, it's what slappy. You just, what you know was what the I mean? reference? Wrong cops. Wrong cops. Yeah. Okay. It's just a slapper, you know? It's just fucking out there. It's weird. It's different. But that said, on the story front, I can't give it that high of a score because the story's silly, it's stupid, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. But I will I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an All eight right. out of twenty seven. Eight's a very respectable score for us. Yeah, that's pretty much what I give stuff that's Right down the middle. <laughs> is that 27 stars, obviously. Yeah, obviously. So, <laughs> Dr. Scientist, it's your turn to tell us what you think about it. All right. Uh, did the story work for you, or was it a bunch of bullshit? Mm, I really was expecting a cow. Yeah. W- would you play this? Wait. Yeah, you I skipped it. it. You were- <laughs> Who cares? Right. Would, did watching this video make you want to play this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> did the story work for you? Or was it a bunch of bullshit? What score out of 27 stars would you give this cow shit? <laughs> uh, wow, I like how he switched it up. Yeah. Gotcha. I like how, I like how he run bullshit with cow shit. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. I'm a poet. Uh, would I play it now? The story worked for me, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why not? Some girl. Any, anyone who says yes to that question is definitely not a confident yes. It's like, yeah, I thought he was going to say not yeah, a cop. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, so I. I actually thought he was going to say not a cop. I don't know why, but I did. Uh, I mean, it's just gist of it. Some bored woman made this whole entire assassin organization up and had you kill people to She's help someone bored. else get revenge. She has to pay for those trips to Ibiza and shit. Yeah, well, that's bored. Yeah, I guess. I think... Uh, all the characters are unique in their own way, even though they're annoying, like Travis Touchdown <laughs> and Sylvia. But all the assassins that you fought were not boilerplate, all kind of, you know what I mean? Not yeah, they all unique. had their, like... They had their yeah. own personalities. I will definitely yeah. give him that. And then throws in the nice twist that it's all made up and this isn't a real thing, which is awesome. Yeah. Because why would it be? As Chump Slap said. <laughs> right. I really liked at the end when he's like, I'm your twin brother. And Sophia's my wife. And then they didn't give any explanation. Like, oh, I think it's more of a commentary on video games <laughs> and how ridiculous all the stories are. Yeah. And then it ends as a painting in a gallery somewhere. So yeah. you're like, oh, it, none of it's real. It's a parody of itself. Yeah. It's like you guys are taking video, you guys being the other developers, are taking video games too seriously. I'm going to have some fun with yeah. this. And it's yeah. Yeah. Pretty selling. much. And that's that. This story can be nonsense because people just play it anyway. Yeah, it's more about the playing the game. It's kind of a slap in the face to this whole podcast. <laughs> yeah. Much, yeah, yeah, I think it is. I'll give it an extra point for that. I'll give it right? nine. Yeah. Nine? I want to add one because I just thought of that now. <laughs> Now's the time. Do you want to add one? No, I've never done that. I can't do it now. Okay. I like your uh, your stick it your stick to itiveness. <laughs> Integrity, we call it. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> so that gives us a score of 24. Which, okay. that means it's the second highest Suda game we've talked about. So, going from the bottom, Shadows of the Damned got 13 points. Mm. Uh, the next one in line is Killer 7 with 22 points we gave that. Oh, wow. Uh, then this one, we just gave 24 points. And then the best Suda game, we gave 46 points to Lollipop. Damn. 46? <laughs> yeah. Wow. We sure did. That was a damn good game, though. Yeah, it was. I, I did not expect it to be that high. <laughs> Me neither. Things no, were different I, back then. <laughs> yeah, different time. It wasn't this year, so you're not going to see it on our end of the year review. But it was. It didn't make the end of the year reviews in the other years. I don't think it did. No. 
the year we talked about it? Yeah. Probably not. Uh, it, it's not that important to look at. No. Up. No, it, it wasn't one of the top games that year. <laughs> yeah. How sick is that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was 2019, and we had some bangers. Our top five that year were Bioshock, Borderlands, Dead Space, <laughs> Borderlands 2. Oh, uh, okay. And something else I don't have in front of me. I think God of War. Yeah, that makes sense. I though. mean, those are some hitters. Like, you, <laughs> what are you going to do? Fair enough. But all right. With that being said, let's go ahead and move into our favorite segment of every week, which is Dr. Scientist 90s album Lock of the Week. Put a quarter in the jukebox, rock some 90s shit. Now that's cool. Man, every that week. Was really off beat. That was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, we ask Dr. Scientist for a 100% guaranteed, amazing 90s album, Lock of the Week. We are at the end of the year. This is episode number uh, 201. Yeah, I think so. Oh, wow. You've only got three more albums to tell us about this year, Dr. Scientist. So what is the first of those three? All right. This one was released on October 24th, 1995. 95. No guesses? All right. Third Eye Blind. (laughs) Whoa, whoa, whoa. What'd you say? Third Eye Blind. Oh, man, Papa Scotch. Killed it. No. That'd be sick. Oh, that'd be so sick. After touring for their second album, the lead singer of this band felt the this band musical approach was running its course and wanted to record what he thought would be their last album. So they went in the recording studio, did a whole bunch of shit, whatever. Came out with 57 songs and put 28 songs on this album. It debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard <gasps> and was the only album by this band at the top of the Billboard 200. And over the course of 1996, it was certified diamond, was nominated for seven Grammys and nine MTV Video Music Awards. Is diamond better than platinum? No. I don't think so. I'm going to guess Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Did you cheat Papa Scotch? No, that was the only one I remember that was a double disc. Yeah, it was. was yeah, good. that was damn good. It yeah. was a good album. Muzzle's still one of my favorite songs of all time. I'm, I will, I'm going to talk. The only reason I know this. It was a massive coincidence, <laughs> but uh, I was watching. I just started the Pam and Tommy series, yeah. <laughs> which takes place in '96, and they go into Tower Records, uh, and the albums they have on the side are like Evil Empire, No Doubt's Tragic Kingdom, and then Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. So I just guessed that that was around that time. <laughs> well, that makes I knew sense. It was a with Twenty-eight album. songs, yeah. yeah, good shit. Nailed it. So that puts me ahead, right? I think for the I albums. stopped keeping score, like. Yeah, two I, months I in. I think you're one up now. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think I'm up by one. We got two more weeks left. Anything yeah. can happen, Ooh, guys. Ooh, it's going to be close. Oh, one. yeah. <laughs> That's going to take us then to our favorite segment of every week, which is Chump Slaps. Who would win in a fight? Who's going to win in this fight right here? I don't know and I don't care. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's great. All right. <laughs> Every week for three more weeks, we ask Chump Slap who would win the fight. We ask him three questions, one from the game we just talked about, one from gaming in general, and one from history and or celebrity. So we got a lot of people in this game. So I'm going to say who would win between Shinobu Mm -hmm. and the names escaping me, but the woman who put the grenade in her mouth. I knew. Yeah, that's a good one. Holly Summers. There you go. Holly Summers. Holly Summers or Shinobu? Holly Summers or Shinobu? Did Holly Summers even have a sword? No, she had grenades. That was it, right? I'd have to, I'd have to go with the, the sword master, Shinobu. Yeah, she does seem like a pretty big badass. Yeah, not to be like uh, ableist, but Summers had was missing a leg. <laughs> just another place to store more grenades. Yeah, and I mean, someone throws a grenade at you, you're gonna run past it and just psh, hit him with a. Katana or something, yeah. Then again, not to be whatever, but she was higher ranked than Shinobu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a made-up bullshit ranking. <laughs> Which, for an organization that doesn't exist, you mean? Yes, exactly, see? And, yeah, she probably had more experience, too. But... It would have made so much more sense if the other assassins weren't aware of the contest. Yeah. But then why would they fight? Why did they fight? <laughs> it would have made sense. <laughs> That's... <laughs> How does she talk people into fighting to their deaths? And is she like, all right, guys, sit in this ranking system until uh, someone else comes to kill you, I guess. And then you're going to fight. Yeah. Anyway, so how about from, from you picked, uh, sorry, Shinobu. Yeah. From gaming in general, I wanted to take two people from two Suda51 games. Okay. So we are going to have Garcia Hotspur, <laughs> the protagonist from Shadows of the Damned. Right. Mm-hmm. We all remember. 
who would win between he and Garcian Smith from Killer Seven, the dude in the silver suit with the tie? Jesus Christ! Like I fucking remember any of these guys. Hey, um, you can also pretend you remember and just bullshit your way through it. Oh, saying. I remember Shadow of the Damned. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Remember, you had to shoot the fucking heads of the things to make light. He did happen, go through so hell. Pass through. Yes, I do remember that. I think he'd win. I don't remember the silver suit guy, but if he's anything like the the 1990s Pepsi infomer or commercial guy, I don't think he's going to win. Max Headroom or whatever. So you think Garcia Hotspur would win because Garcian Smith might be like Max Headroom? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think he's, what didn't you understand? <laughs> what do I, did I fucking stutter? <laughs> I got to clean out my fucking ears or something. I'm, oh, boy. I get it. It's all on me. So now, from Celebrity, this last fight, uh, this is one you do know. Oh, all right. Who would win in a bare-knuckle boxing, no-shirt fight to the death between Weird Al Yankovic and Scott Ackerman? Oh, shit, son. Best friends in the ring fighting to the death. Uh, you know what what is the motivation for the fight? Uh, the fight is their Joker's gang is recruiting, and they can only take one of them. Uh, so they have to fight to the death to see who is in Joker's gang. Uh, I, I'm trying to figure out. They're both pretty tall people. Yeah, and they're lanky. Yeah. And they're not fighters. This has got to be one of the most even matchups we've seen. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my God. I don't know where to go with this. Are they both 50, too? Yeah, they've got to be around I, the same Yeah, age. they're probably close. Close to it. Oh, i got to look this up. Uh, is it? Oh, it's bare knuckle fighting. You said, yeah. So no like uh, weapons at all. Uh, just because I'm gonna have to go with Scotty Ox because I still okay. listen to Comedy Bang Bang and I'd like to have that keep going. Plus, he has a kid, so he has to fight for that. I don't so think does, Weird Al has a kid. Yeah, he does. Does he? Sure. Why not? Several, I think. Oh well, if he has several, then he has more to fight for than <laughs> Scotty Ox. <laughs> but I mean, they might be older. I think they are. Oh, they already lived through everything. Yeah. Yeah, they don't need a dad anymore. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, Weird Al's 63. Oh, yeah. Then Scotty will get him. Scotty's only 50 something. Scotty's 52. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Age will win this one. There you go. I believe in the Scotty Ox. Well, if someone maybe knew about some kind of secret martial arts training that Weird Al might have had, and they've also replayed this scenario a billion times in their head and they wrote a fanfic about it, where would they send that email to, Sir Chompslap? We'll send that to plotytime at gmail.com. I'd love to read it because that sounds fucking amazing. I know. Don't take that idea unless you already wrote it. Then send it to us. <laughs> How can they get to us faster on the socials, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty Time on Instagram, probably Twitter. Uh, and stop by the Reddit and answer the polls that Papa Scotch puts up all the time. Or send us a question. I did one. We and, did all the time. Well, it's going to be all the time now. Yep, yeah. We're going to do, do more of them. And <laughs> Damn right. have a picture of. Papa Scotch fighting his evil twin with laser katanas, and Ooh, Kermit the Frog is watching. With a cup right. of Lipton iced tea. No, with a blanket over his pants like he's jacking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can also go to YouTube, like, and subscribe there. It really helps us out. Uh, or you can go to playtime.com and buy merch through our official eBay store. I swear to God, that's legitimate. I'm just uh, <laughs> picturing Kermit jacking off under a blanket now. <laughs> if it's a good enough picture of Kermit jacking off, maybe we'll put on a t-shirt. I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, so that does it for us. So as always, shout out to Blaine JJ. Shout out to Drago the Slago. Shout out to Ham Man. Shout out to the man in our hearts, Louise Guzman. More importantly than all that, don't trust Dr. Scientists. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.